Our CS 2025 coverage is made possible by Thermaltake, Azus, XBG, Haven, Lian Lee, Cable Mod, and Bits Power. Alrighty, guys, we are, of course, at the ROG Asus Suite at CES 2025. Welcome back, guys. I'm Stuart from GGF, and we have a lot to cover here at this suite. It's going to be a little bit all over the place. It's going to be a little bit noisy, so I do apologize for that because there are some very hot products behind me, and everyone wants to take a look. So you have the brand new 50 series NVIDIA cards from Azus, or maybe not so, so much Azus, but from the ROG Republic of Gamers department. So we have the brand new Astral cards here. We have the Strix over here, and then we go down to the Tough, and then also the Prime. Prime, we saw a little bit of Computex uh, last year. It's had a redesign, and I really do appreciate the new aesthetics that cards has. Now, main thing I want to get out of the way, the Strix. Strix is now not the top dog when it comes to the 50 series cards. Now, when I mean top of the line, that's where it was uh, previously, but then there are also the Halo products like the Matrix and things like that. Uh, there's none of those just yet. We may see them later on, but currently the top of the line card is going to be the Astral. This is a brand new design. Now, I saw early renders of this card, uh, I would say closer to the end of last year. And this is before they even had the naming scheme. So they wanted a card that lined up with the ROG Extreme series, or more or less just the ROG line, because there was the ROG Strix, which worked nicely. You had all the ROG Strix boards, but I felt like the Extreme motherboard range was a little bit on its own, because you had to pair it with something like an ROG Strix motherboard. So now they've came, come out with this uh, Astral series. Now this would just look perfect in a, just think of something like an ROG Extreme motherboard. When it came with the naming scheme, they reached out to me and said, hey, what do you think would be a cool name for this? And I just said, let's just go with the Extreme. I really like the Extreme. That means you could go with an Extreme motherboard. You could go with an Extreme GPU. It would be absolutely perfect. You've got your ROG uh, Strix over here. You've got your Strix motherboard, your whole Strix lineup. That's it. But they went with the Astral. I'm not sure uh, how they came up with that, but that's what they came with. The Astral also comes in an LC version. It looks like this is the same all-in-one color that came on the recent 4090 Matrix. Obviously, the LC part up here is a little bit different than the Matrix. It does have similar design elements. I'll get some shots on the back, but it is a very nice looking card for that one. This card here is very heavy. Oh yes, 5090, very heavy. I'm not gonna go too much into the specs. I'm sure all of you guys have watched all the YouTube videos. Uh, you probably watched the keynote and all that. I'm just gonna go over more of the aesthetics, the sizes of the card. This one's looking like it's gonna be nearly a four slot card. I don't want to take this off with one hand. I don't want to drop it. It is very heavy. The Strix is looking more like your standard three and a half, 3.7 slot card. The idea behind the new Strix was, it's a mix between the older 30 series cards and the 40 series cards. So I haven't seen what this looks like on, but you've got this mirror all on the front and that's going to mimic sort of similar on the 30 series Strix. And then it's got elements from the 40 series uh, Strix. Now moving on to the Tough. The Tough has had a new redesign. It's still, I would say, similar to the previous gen. Nothing too over the top. We have some silver aesthetics on each corner and that is still a big card as well. So from what I've been told, the Strix will only go now up to the 5080. So have like your 70, uh, your 80 and any cards in between. The Astral will of course be your 5080. I don't think they'll do a 5070, so having 5080, 5090. The Tough will also go all the way up to a uh, 5090. And I'm not sure how far the Prime will go. Here we see the Prime is a 5070 Ti and then a 5070. So yeah, one important thing to note that the Strix won't be going all the way up to the uh, 5090. So that's just one thing to note with that one. Over here, we finally have an all AMD BTF motherboard. So this is the Tough Gaming B850 BTF. Nice looking board, all black aesthetic. Now, I remember on the Intel one last year, the Tough Gaming, it was the all white. Of course, going to AMD, it's all black, and that's based on the new V850 chipset. All the connectors are hidden, and I'll get some shots on the B-roll. It's actually in a Fractal Design chassis. That must be a new chassis from Fractal Design. Uh, it is based on their standard North. It looks like an XL, but it does have the back connect capability for that chassis. So, other features on this board, 
It's got all your standard Q release, your Q latch, your Q slide, all of that, and then your Q slim for your PCI, so it's got that quick release. I covered a lot on the recent launch of all those boards and all those features. And another area I want to talk about, or another product, is the new AMD GPU. So this one here is the RX 9070 XT. We haven't seen any performance figures on that. I think uh, Nvidia sort of stole the uh, highlight on the last few days, but this card here, actually not as heavy as you would think. Definitely nothing like those previous cards I just looked at. Uh, AMD is sticking to your standard triple A pin. So straight away that tells me, triple A pin, it's still going to be pretty powerful because we really only saw that on the top end 7900 cards. So if we're seeing triple A pin on here, I can see performance is still going to be pretty high. So it's good to see that they're sticking with that. They're not going with uh, the NVIDIA 12 volt high power connector. I know a lot of people will still appreciate that. But the aesthetics on this card, they actually tie this in with their uh, new 50 series card. Very similar, you've got the silver aesthetics on each corner. And then this looks to be your more traditional uh, three and a half, 3.7 slot. And then you have the nice backbite over there. So in terms of the tough changes on their GPUs, I wouldn't say aesthetics wise, they have gone too far over the top in terms of their design. Now, still staying with the tough lineup. Now, all of these boards aren't the same chipset. It's more this whole area and the backdrop is all tough gaming. So the boards will vary from Intel to AMD. And when it comes to all the specs, I'm not just going to try and read out everything on these cards. I'll just throw up some shots on these cards so you can get a good idea. So this one over here is a tough gaming Z890 Pro Wi-Fi. One little interesting feature on here is this cover can slide off. So you can have the aesthetic of everything being silver. And then you can have the aesthetic, if I can do this back on film slides down and you can put that wherever you want obviously you're not going to put it down super low you can just slide that in the middle there and once again you have your Q release for the M.2 this whole cover here is not Q release we see some boards do it some boards don't but this one you're going to be doing one two three four five six screws to get to those other M.2 and then we have the uh, Q release for your PCI so when I was doing those uh, recent motherboard unboxing, you don't have the Q release over here for your uh, GPU. It's actually built into the slot now. Once you start to remove your card out of the slot, it automatically releases the clip. So you don't have to worry about pushing any buttons or anything. It's just good to go. Moving on to this one over here. This is a Tough Gaming B860 Plus. So the B860 is the uh, new Intel chipset, and then the B850 is the new AMD, which is just uh, launched at the uh, start of the CES, so both the AMD and the Intel announced their B-series chipsets. This one here, uh, not back connect. These two aren't back connect, just standard style boards. And this one here is your more traditional. And interesting how they've gone with the older style uh, Q release there instead of the uh, more newer one where it does just use the slot rather than the actual connector. But yeah, nice looking board. And these ones will be at a much more affordable price than sort of the more ROG lineup that Asus has to offer. Now on this side, we have a lot of the ROG mobile devices. This is also their ROG NUC. I'll talk a little about that in a sec, but the, behind me over here, we have the ROG Phone 9s, the 9 Pros. They're looking really sweet, and they've got some fancy designs on the back. I won't talk about those, because I'm more interested in this monster-looking 2025 NUC. As you can see, it's had a bit of a redesign than before, but the main standout feature I saw on this it is running up to an RTX 5080. So there is a 5080 GPU in here. It is a laptop version, so it will be limited on wattage. Like, this here is basically the size of a GPU. So there's no way you're gonna be able to fit a full-blown wattage of a physical GPU in this. It will be limited, but it's still pretty sick on what they can actually do. Now, I actually spoke to the guys at ROG and I said, hey, is this model actually running? This GPU, it actually is. It is in there. It's not just a mock-up. It's not just a shell. This is an actual unit. It has a Intel Core Ultra 9 CPU Series 2. It can run up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5. Now, I thought, okay, that's cool, but some of the ROG products before, the laptops and that, a lot of them were soldered. They normally give you one slot, one soldered, but these are both sodiums. So that's what I was told. So if you want to upgrade that later on in the future, their physical sodium slots, that's good to see. In terms of connectivity, it has quite a lot actually. It's what you send at Thunderbolt 4. It has your four USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2 on the rear. I'll try and get a shot on the rear. It's a little bit tight with that cable. I'll get some B-roll. And then I think the main feature is you got quad screen support. So two display port and then two HDMI as well. So it is a little bit, a little bit of a mobile beast. 
but I do like the aesthetic changes. Uh, the previous model was all sort of darker black. This has this nice two-tone, it's a gray, and then you have that mirror ROG over here. And then on the back side, which I'll get a shot on, it's got some, it's got the RGI, that has the RGB, and you can control that as well, of course, with the Armour Crate in their software. I want to thank RG for supporting our CS coverage. They are a great supporter of our channel as well. And we'll see you on the next one.